copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Fresno Police calling all cars. Broadcast 93. Regarding a murder following robbery. Suspect unknown. Not at all. Rio Grande offers free gifts to every boy and every girl. Listen closely at the end of tonight's program and learn how you can get these valuable gifts. Tonight you will hear how the police of Fresno utilize scientific methods to solve a difficult case. Police in a score of other cities have also called upon science to determine which gasoline is the most economical and efficient for police cars. And impressed by city chemists in actual road tests, Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline has given so much greater speed, greater power, and greater mileage than other gasoline that it is now specified for more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency cars than any other brand. This is the same cracked gasoline you get from your Rio Grande service station. And if it is the best gasoline for police cars, it certainly is the best for your car. It costs you no more to buy Rio Grande Cracks with tetra ethyl added and enjoy instantaneous starting, faster acceleration, and police car performance. And now it is our great pleasure to present Chief Frank T. Sulak of the Fresno Police Department. Chief Sulak. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is with a feeling of honor that I bring this story, one of the crimes solved by my department, to this great radio program, Calling All Cars. Located as it is in the middle of the vast agricultural land, Fresno is a metropolis for the San Joaquin Valley. To work on these ranches and in the vineyards and orchards come large numbers of migratory workers, seasonal employees. To keep tab upon these fellows who are here today and gone tomorrow demands a very special police technique. Faced with the necessity of such operations, we have evolved the technique. Added to the numbers of the floating population is also the complexity of race, language, and color. For we must deal with Filipinos, Japanese, Negroes, Mexicans, Chinese, and Hindus. Yet in spite of all these factors, our crime rate in Fresno is satisfactorily low, and as a great boss, this class of migratory workers gives us a little trouble. But there are exceptions. Of such a one, you will hear tonight, and by the end of this program, you will realize why our problems are as difficult as they are. <laughs> I just can't get started. 
Well, if I would borrow a little money from someone just so I could get me a good job, then I could pay him back right quick. I was thinking right quick. I was thinking that seeing as how you and me have been friends for so long, you've been for so long, you might lend me a little just to get started with. Yeah, what? You might lend me a little just to get started with. Yeah, and what'd you all do with it? Take yourself right down to a gin mill and get all gowed up. No, I ain't going to lend you no money, Roy. you got to go out and work for it. Then you can buy your clothes and get your job. No, sir. You are wrong about that gin mill stuff, Matt. I swear I wouldn't go nowhere near no gin. I just want to... Now, Roy, I going to lend you a cent so you might get well stop it. If you forgot the last bit I loaned you, you ain't never paid that back, is you? No, sir. You might just as well forget all about it and just make up your mind that you ain't gonna get it. You all won't lend me no money? Well, that's what I said, and that's just what I mean. Well, that's too bad, Matt. What do you mean, that's too bad? I mean, I got to have some money. You know, then go out and work like any other respectable person. You can't come around here borrowing from me. You're going to give me some money, Matt. I just told you no. Then that's that. Yeah, yeah. where are you going? You're going to see soon enough. Yeah, what you talking about, Roy? You don't sound right. You all sound like... For the last time, Matt, is you going to give me some money? Yeah, well, what you doing with that egg? Roy! Is you going to give me some money? Well, Roy, you done got you... free yourself. Put out that egg. You ain't going to need your money no more, Matt. Get away with that egg! Help! 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 Police department. Murder? Who's this talking? All right, give me the address and I'll have the homicide department out as soon as they can get there. Like I told you, I ain't been here in two days, and when I got here, no one answered the door, so I walked in, and, and there he was. Did your father have any enemies? Anybody hate him? Uh, no, sir, Mr. Officer, I, I don't think there was anybody didn't like my old man. Why, why he ain't never hurt a skunk. Did he owe money to anyone? I, I don't know for sure, but I don't think so. He, he wasn't fond of buying from nobody. Well, let's take a look around the house, Moran, and see what we can find. Yeah. Maybe you'd better look with us, Clarence. You can tell us if you see anything that looks funny. Uh, I, I do hate to walk around in this house, but if, if you say so, I, I guess I got to. Did your father have anything personal, like a watch? Any jewelry or such? Uh, yes, sir. He, he done had a, a big gold watch he's had for more than 30 years. Uh, uh, carried it in his vest pocket on a chain. Hmm. You didn't find anything like that on the body, Jack? No, nope. there wasn't a thing on the body but what was left on the clothes. No wallet or jewelry of any sort. Obviously a matter of robbery after the crime. Yeah, well, I'd give a lot to know whether robbery was the motive or just an episode. Help us to know what kind of person you're looking for. Yeah. Well, I guess there's not much we can do here. The boys have been over the house and yard with a fine blue stone. Not a sign of anything. Suppose you come down to the station with us, Clarence, and give us a detailed report on all you've told us. Yes, sir. Yeah, you go ahead, Jack. I'm going to stick around here for the coroner's report and a couple of other things. I'll see you later and check with you. Okay. Come on, Clarence. Car's out. Of here. Uh, gold watch case. Locomotive engraved on the back. No initials. Watch chain gold. Small rabbit foot attached. And now, what else, Clarence? Uh, well, that, that, that was his wallet. I, I'd sure know that if I ever seen it. What makes you so sure of that? Uh, well, sir, my old man liked pretty things. Uh, this here wallet had a picture of a gal on the inside. A photograph? Uh, n- no, sir, not exactly. Um, uh, more like it was burned into the level. I see. Was it just a head, Clarence, or was it a full figure? Uh, oh, it was the whole figure, Mr. Wise, with, with a lot of hair. That's fine. you got a good memory, Clarence. Things like this help a great deal in investigation work. Now, tell me, do you have any ideas as to who might have had dinner with your father the night the night it happened? Uh, no, no, sir, I don't have the leastest idea. Uh, I had been around the house for two days before. So, uh, me and my brother, we live over on the other side of town and only get to see the old man once in a while. You can't think of anyone who was a good friend of your father that might be liable to eat dinner with? No, sir, I ain't got the slightest notion of anybody like that. Well, we'll just have to work on these few articles that are stolen and hope for results. I guess there's nothing more for you, Clarence, if you want to go home. 
Keep in touch with me. I may need some more help. Uh, uh, I, I've been thinking, Mr. Wise, uh, uh, did they find my old man's suit in the closet? Because uh, if they did, I was thinking uh, he ain't going to have no more use for it, and I could use it mighty handy myself. So what'd this suit look like, man? It was a brand new one, Mr. Wise. Uh, he only had it a couple of months. Well, was it black, gray? See if you can give me a description of it. Well, sir, it, it was a kind of gray, but it uh, had a kind of mark on it, sort of a checker. Checkered, I see. Gray with white text? But that's right. I, I, you got it here, Mr. Wise? Sorry, Clarence, but I'm afraid it was taken along with the rest of the jewelry and things. Well, I guess that's that. I'm afraid so, Clarence. I, is that all you want to mean now? Because if it is, I'm going to go back home. Yes, I guess that's all. Oh, one thing, Clarence. Did you kill your father? Uh, what's that, Mr. Wise? Uh, what's that you just said? I asked you, did you kill your father? No, no, sir. Of course I didn't kill my father. Dog's gone. Are you crazy to say things like that? That's all right, sir. You can go. Just forget what I said. And we'll let you know if anything breaks. Yes, sir, but, but I sure don't know what you mean by asking such a question. I don't... Don't worry about it, Clarence. I just wanted to see what you'd say. Yes, sir. Well, uh, goodbye, Mr. Wise. Goodbye, Clarence. You'll find a way out through that door there. Yes, sir. Goodbye. 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 Yes, goodbye. Yes, goodbye. 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 Miss Ali, Steve Moran is coming here, will you? If he has, ask him to come to my office. Thanks. A lot of swell food to work on, I don't think. A watch, a suit, some remains of a meal, and that's all. Hello, Jerry. Hi. Anything out of the boys? Not much. A description of the missing articles. I found out one thing, though. The boy didn't kill his father. Yeah, I was wondering about that angle, too. What makes you so sure? Pop the question at him, and his answer and that look on his face is enough for me. He's not a good enough actor to be hiding anything. He just looked completely amazed. Psychology stuff, eh? Well, if you're convinced, it's all right with me. What'd you find at the house? Uh, not an awful lot. Had the boys take the plates and silverware in for fingerprints. Just a chance of something turning up, but I haven't much hope. Makes as though this thing was going to be a tough baby to crack. I wouldn't be surprised by what you're right, Moran. Well, let's get this description to watch, wallet, and suit off and get the boys working on it from that angle. See if they can dig up any of these things. Cover all pawn shops, old clothes shops, and junk shops. Then we'll see what the boys have found in the way of fingerprints. Checking with the personal fingerprint expert, Detective Wise and Moran discover one tiny clue to the unknown visitors the murder house. Johnson's fingerprints are found on everything from the dining table. But on a milk bottle found beside the table, the prints of a stranger are clearly shown. Acting on this bit of good luck, the prints are taken to the gallery and compared with those of thousands of criminals. But they don't match a single step. With this discouraging bit of information, the two detectives settle down to the long and drilling task of checking each small detail for some unnoticed piece. Well, here we are, right back where we started. A nice block of descriptions. Of everything but what we want. Yeah. And all we know is that someone had dinner with Johnson, ate everything in the place, and then picked up an axe and proceeded to chop him down. Why? Yeah. Why? That's what the chief been at. And everyone else. There wasn't a drink in the house. Young Johnson said his old man was dead against drinking. Wouldn't have a bottle around. You know, it doesn't seem logical to me that anyone wanting to rob the few things that old Johnson had would go to the trouble of murdering him. It doesn't make much sense to me. Murders never do. Hello? Well, I'll go to Los Angeles on the wire point, Sergeant. Right, put him on. Yes, sir. Dr. Wise will talk to you. Go ahead. Hello, Wise. Yeah. Oh, hello, Captain. Got some information for you on that axe murder. Turned up a watch that answered your description in the pawn shop here in Los Angeles. Good. What's the dope on it? A lot by the name of Jake Shaw left it a month ago, three days after the murder. Well, that looks like we'll have to start looking for our man down there. No, I don't think so. A letter came to the pawn shop yesterday asking the watch you sent to this same Jake Shaw in Fireball, California. Fireball? Well, that's only about 40 miles north of Fresno. Right. It's up in the cotton camp district. There was no address indicated in the letter, just care of general delivery. Well, I'll send Castellan up there immediately. Thanks a million, Captain. This clears up a lot of things for us. Glad to have been able to help, Wise. Anything else we find, I'll shoot up to you again. Fine. Thanks again. Goodbye. Goodbye. What a break. The man we want is somewhere up in Fireball, and he's expecting to get the watch in the mail. Hmm. Just as I was getting ready to throw the whole thing over. Well, we'll get here, hold of Castellan, and have him go up there. He knows that district, and he speaks Mexican. Uh, get Sergeant Castellan right away and tell him to come in here. And uh, you better tell him to... His final instructions complete, 
Sergeant Castellon leaves Fresno the same day and heads for the cotton camp in Fireball, California. Arriving late that night, his first move is to put up at a cheap rooming house, being careful to create the impression that he's a chance, just looking around. Early the next morning, Castellon approaches the small post office. Yeah, when is this? Is there any mail for Gonzalez? Gonzalez? Yeah, let me see. Uh, Gerhard, Crabhorn, Gallery. No, nope, anything. Hey, senor, I wonder if you know a fellow up here by the name of Shaw. Shaw? I, I, I don't seem to remember anybody by that name, but maybe no one will seen him. I never, never forget his face. No, sir, but name. Well, I, I hear so many every day that sometimes they just slip right by before I can catch him and remember him. I <laughs> see, senor. I, I guess that is right. Hey, you have a big business here for a small town. Yeah, biggest in these parts. Uh, cotton picking time, I got two, three hundred people getting mail. Yeah, uh, I am staying over at Mrs. Kelly's for a while. Maybe I will run across my friend while I am here. Uh, if you happen to hear the name, let me know. I am very anxious to see him. Friend of yours? Si, senor. A negro. He uh, used to work for me. Uh, but, senor, if you run into him, do not tell him I was asking for him. I uh, uh, want to surprise him, shall we? Surprise him, huh? Uh, all right, young fellow. If I, if I see him, I'll tell you about it. Uh, gracias, senor. Adios. Goodbye. Next, please. Is there any mail here for Robinson, George, White, Robinson, All right, all right, break it up. You're up here to work, not to sit around singing. But it's too dark on the hot to work. The basketball boy to work in his heat. Oh, it's too hot for you, eh? All right, Jones. If you don't want to work, why don't you put down that sock and start walking? I understand it's a long walk to town. No, sir. I don't want to quit my job. I just say it's too hot. I just say it's hot. All right, all right, all right. And pick up that sock and get to work. I don't want to find you men standing around here next time I come out. You understand? Yes, I'm Mr. McCann. I don't You are the foreman here? That's right. What do you have? I would like to see you for a moment alone. Eh? 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 Come on back to the shack. Uh, to come out here every once in a while and beat these boys into shape for a little work. Do they hate that word work? Uh. <laughs> I do not blame them in this heat. Hey, is it always this hot around here, Zenio? Always this hot. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, this is a cool day compared to lots of them. And gets as hot as 115 up here. What does it appear? I do not think I would care for that much. Uh, here we are. Come on in and sit down if you can find a place. Uh, not much of an office. You uh, use it for a place to live and an office and anything else you can think of. Thanks. <laughs> I'll come to the point. <laughs> I guess you wonder why the accent. Uh, my name's Castle of the Fresno Police. Oh, police, eh? Uh, my name is Mike Harry. I'm glad to know you. Uh, I'm looking for a fellow that got into a little trouble down in Fresno, and uh, I've got an idea he's working in one of the camps up here. His name's uh, Jake Shaw, a Negro. Uh, Shaw? Well, I, uh, Shaw. I don't, uh, I don't think he's at this camp. I, I know the boy's name pretty well, and I, I don't think there's any Shaw. Well, uh, have you taken on any new men in the last month? Uh, no, 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 not a single one. I, uh... Are you certain his name's Shaw? No, no, I'm not positive, but uh, he's been going under that name as far as I know. Uh, well, I, I'm afraid your man's not here. Uh, however, the lads are always coming up here looking for work. Uh, if any new ones come, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, you, you, you staying around here? Yeah, I'm bored at Mrs. Tilly's place under the name of Gonzalez. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd check with me on any Negroes you don't know that come here. I, 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 I'll do that. Uh, will you... Well, you have a wee drappy before you go. I have some beer here. It's good for a hot day. Yes, eh? a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the answer to a maiden's first. No, there ain't no mail for Gonzales. Yeah, I do not seem to have much luck with letters, do I, senor? No, sir. Yeah, I don't. But I got some news for you. Yes, see, senor? Yeah. What? I see the fellow you're looking for. Sure? When? Last night. I, I was just closing when this fellow come in and asked for his mail. And he said his name was Shaw? He did. But it didn't sound like he wanted anybody else to know it. He, he didn't look like he wanted anyone to see him either. Uh, he didn't like the looks of him, I didn't. I thought maybe he's up to something when he first came in. Uh, what made you think that, senor? Uh, sir, he thought it just popped up from nowhere. 
I didn't see him at all till all of a sudden there he was standing beside me. <laughs> he didn't start to dig. Yeah, what did he look like? <laughs> yeah, that's the funny thing, Dad. Seeing as how he's a friend of yours. You sure he's a friend? Well, it is, it is, senor. I, I only wanted to know what he looked like to be sure it was him. Uh, you ain't fooling me, young fella. You're a policeman, ain't you? A policeman? Well, senor, what makes you think that? Mm, never you mind what makes me think. I ain't so old I can't tell the law when you see it. You are the law, ain't you? <laughs> well, I guess it's no use trying to fool you, Pop. Yes, I'm the law. Now, you're going to help me. Uh, I knew it all the time. Ever since the first day you walked in here with that pony accent. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to just surprise him. <laughs> hey, you're a pretty smart fellow, Pop. I fool lots of people, but not you. Uh, now, tell me, uh, what does fellow Shaw look like? Uh, I got a full description of him. I knew darn well that he was looking for a cook or something, so I think he did want one. I wrote it down on a slip of paper. I'll, I'll get it for you. I've got, got it in my jeans. Yeah, by golly, Pop, uh, you ought to be on the force. Uh, and that ain't all. I told him that there wasn't no mail for him, but that there was an early morning bus and that there might be something on it. He said he'd be back this evening. Pop, if he comes back tonight, you and I are going to grab him right here. Uh, 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 what did he do? He's a murderer, Pop. Murderer? A desperate man. Well, uh, now, uh, according to postal regulations, i got to close in half an hour. Uh, you're going to stay open tonight. You're going to talk to him uh, while I hide over behind that petition. Well, how about me hiding behind Now, that never petition? mind that. Never well, mind. I... When he's not looking, I'll come out from behind and nab him. As evening falls over the heat rack, little town, Castellon and his newly found deputy settle down to their well-planned scheme. One hour goes by. A few stragglers ever get their mail and leave. Two hours. Three hours and no sign of Shaw. Impatient Catherine is just preparing to give up the vigil when... You got a any package for me? Oh, well, well, what was your name? Dick Shaw. Ought to be a package oh. here from Los Angeles. Well, well uh, just, just a minute. Uh, uh, there was a couple of things on the bus. There might be something. I, I, I'll look. Put up your hands, Shaw. Huh? You're under arrest. What is this? Put up your hands. Stand where you are. I got a forty-five and the same right at your back. That's right. Now keep him up. Yeah, nice work, young fella. <laughs> what do you want me to do now? Hey, what's this all about? What's all this here stick em up business? I guess you know well enough what it's all about, Sean. I arrest you for the murder of Matt Johnson in Fresno one month and two weeks ago. Am I interested in Pop? Take his weapons away from him. Okay. Yeah, he ain't got anything on him. All right. If you put your hands down now, Shaw, we'll put a nice set of bracelets on your wrist. I don't know what all this is about. I never heard of no Matt Johnson. You'll get the wrong fella, sure enough. All right, Shaw. It isn't going to do you any good to deny anything. You might just as well relax. You and I are taking a nice little trip down to Fresno. I have a feeling the boys will be glad to see you. Taking his prisoner with him, Sergeant Castellon drives the 40 miles into Fresno that night and lodges him safely in the jail. The next morning, Detective Sergeant Wise and Inspector Moran, in company with Castellon, pay Shaw a visit in his cell. Well, Shaw, you certainly led us a nice chase. It's nice to see you. Listen here. I don't know nothing about all this, and I want to get out of here. I never done heard of this fella that got killed. What about that watch you pawned down in L.A.? I bought that watch from a Mexican fella. He told me it was his. How much did you give him for it? Uh, Three dollars. Pretty cheap for a gold watch, wasn't it, Tom? I guess so. What about the suit of clothes that we found pawned and handed under your name? Whose suit was that? I don't know. I bought that from the same fella. Why don't you give up all this lying, Shaw? We have you dead to rights. As soon as we get your fingerprints, we'll have definite proof. I ain't lying, and you can't prove nothing. All right, Shaw. Deny everything you want to. It's just going to make it a lot tougher when you go on trial. Now, let's leave him to think it over. As soon as his fingerprints are taken, we'll take a look at him. That's a good idea. Well, have a nice time, Shaw. I hope you don't have any bad dreams. You've got lots of reasons to have them. Turnkey, come here and let us out. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> as soon as they print him, have the print sent up, will you? Yes, sir. I'm do that. Sing it over, Shaw. It's not going to do you any harm to tell. If you feel like spilling it, tell Turnkey, and I'll come down and listen to anything you have to say. That is, everything, excepting that you didn't do it. I've heard enough of that. <laughs> Confident that they have arrested the right man and waiting only until the fingerprints are compared with those from the milk bottle, the detectives return to the office of Sergeant Wise. There they are congratulating Castellan on his work when the arrival of Lynn, chief of the fingerprint department, brings them face to face with a strange turn of the heart. 
It's the first time in my experience with fingerprints that I've run across anything like it. I had the impression that such a thing was more or less impossible. Well, impossible or not, the answer remains the same. The man's fingerprints are so worn from handling raw cotton that it's impossible to get a clear print of them. So how long will it take before you can get one? You know, I should say it'd be a month or more at best. And you mean to say that we've got to sit here and wait a month before we can bring this guy to trial? If his fingerprints are needed, yes. Look here, Wise. We've got enough on shore to send him up. Fingerprints and no fingerprints. Yeah, and you know that gang in the DA's office. They won't handle it if we haven't got the final proof. And what's more, I don't want to take any chance of having this bird slip out of it because of lack of evidence. No, we'll just have to spit on our hands and wait. Meanwhile, supplying board and bed for our friend, Mr. Saul. Of all the rotten breaks, we've really had him on this case. Well, anyway, we'll have plenty of time to break this bird story. A month in jail has a funny way of making a man think. Yeah, think about a lot of things. Such as axes? Where have you, been? Where have you seen this axe before? I've never seen it before. Here, dig it in your hand. Look at it closely. Still say you never saw it before now? No, I told you a hundred times. I don't know what this is all about. No, I ain't never seen this your axe. Why don't you all leave me alone? Quit asking me questions. Because we're going to keep right on asking you questions until you tell us all about it. You killed Matt Johnson and you know it. I didn't. Then where'd you get his watch, his wallet, his suit? I told you, Phil had done stole them to me. What was his name? Well, whose name? The man you bought them from. What was his name? Oh, I don't know his name. Then how's it happen you knew him well enough to buy these things from him? I don't know. Stop asking me these questions over and over again. I can't think with you yelling at me. Oh, I'm going to give you a last chance to tell me what you know. If you don't, I won't bother you again. But I warn you, you're just holding things up for no good. I've been told that your fingers are practically okay again. In another week, we'll have your prints and then you're finished. Now, what do you say? Will you talk or not? I... No, I didn't do it. Finally, the day comes when it is possible to get a clear print from the thumb of Shaw, who still denies his guilt. Eagerly, Detectives Wise, Moran, and Castellon await the report from Captain Lynn. And shortly after the prints have been taken, they are compared with those from the milk bottle and found to be identical. The case, therefore, remains only to be tried in court. Days pass, and testimony after testimony is offered for the jury to consider. Shaw, still protesting his innocence, is rapidly faced with such a complete set of facts against him that it remains only for the judge to charge the jury. And one afternoon in Superior Court, presided over by Judge Slaughter's in Fresno, seven men and five women silently file from the jury bench to their chambers to reach a verdict. In less than one hour, the same twelve people return to the courtroom. Look, the jury is coming back. Yeah, I wonder what they'll say. All of you in the court. The jury reached the verdict? We have, Your Honor. The clerk, please read the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of murder on the first degree. X-ray! X-ray! Take it off! Take it off! Take it off! Take it off! Jake Shaw, Elias Roy Parker, stand and face the court. Have you anything to say before the court passes sentence upon you? No, sir. Only? No, sir. Nothing to say. Very well. Jake Shaw, Elias Roy Parker, it is the duty of this court to pronounce sentence upon you. After considering the evidence placed before this court, there is no shadow of doubt in my mind as to your guilt. Therefore, I sentence you to San Quentin Penitentiary for the remainder of your natural life. Oh, Lord. Now for the free gift which Rio Grande offers to every boy and every girl. To find out about these gifts and how you can get them all free of charge, merely go tonight or tomorrow to the independent service station in your neighborhood featuring Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Ask for free copy of the Calling All Cars News. In the big double-sized September issue of the news, you will read true detective stories, latest movie news, 
and you'll find pictures of all the many gifts for every boy and girl. We invite parents to drive their boys and girls to the Rio Grande service station tonight. Read this big issue of the news and see how you can help your youngsters get all these gifts quickly at no cost to you. And while you're in the Rio Grande station, fill up your tank with crack, the gasoline that gives extra value, any that gives extra value. Enjoy the thrill of greater speed, greater power than ever before. Find out for yourself why Rio Grande cracked gasoline is used by more police cars, fire engines, and emergency equipment than any other brand. Get police car performance in your car. Attention all Fresno police cars. Cancellation of broadcast 93 regarding a murder. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That is all. This is your narrator, Fred